So a few years ago, my family and I visited the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. And one thing we went to see was the Atlanta Space Shuttle. And while seeing it, my kids were just amazed and it was just this awe-inspiring situation. But I wondered, where did the name Atlantis come from? Who came up with it and why? Of course, I asked my five-year-old son, and at the time, he had informed me very confidently that the name Atlantis on the shuttle came from the fictional island of Atlantis that I don't think is actually real, but conspiracy theories have gone on long enough. So that's what I want to figure out today on Space Course. Where did the names of all NASA's missions and spacecraft, where did they come from and who just decided them? Many of the names that NASA has chosen over the years have been just amazing, awe-inspiring names that have just been strong and powerful, like Viking and Voyager and Atlantis, Apollo, but at the same time has also been the boring and the mundane, like the International Space Station. Come on, they could have come up with something cool for that. There's also many times where there's been awkward acronyms that have been put together to make a word, like the Gravity Recovery and Interior Laboratory. Or grail. So let's take a deep dive into what makes a name. What criteria is there behind this, this NASA naming scheme? As it turns out, NASA has actually had official criteria in place for choosing these names since the 1960s. It all started out with the ad hoc committee to name space objects and projects, which began to informally meet to, to work out a well-defined criteria for coming up with these names. This first committee eventually turned into the Project Designation Committee, which in 1961 became the official oversight group for all naming conventions. And at the time they came up with very specific terms and criteria that we still have today. Each project name will be a simple euphonic word that will not duplicate or be confused with other NASA or non-NASA project titles. When possible and if appropriate, names will be chosen to reflect NASA's mission. Project names will be serialized when appropriate. However, serialization will be used only after successful flight or accomplishment has been achieved. But this committee didn't stay around forever as in 1963, there was many uh, cancellations of projects and projects being deferred. So it ended up being shut down or at least dampered for a little while. And then after 1970, the project coordination group actually only met when specifically requested to. And these criteria actually stood up until the year 2000 when they only made a few slight changes in addendums. The only changes they added in the year 2000 were that the names needed to be easily pronounced and they would try and limit the use of acronyms. Yet despite all of these committees over the years and all of the paperwork involved, there's still a lot of cool names that NASA has come up with, a lot of really impactful and iconic names for space missions, spacecraft, all the different things that NASA has to do over the years. And I wanna go over just a couple of those and really highlight where the names came from, why they were chosen and who chose them. So let's begin with the Space Shuttle Enterprise. So you might be surprised to know that the first shuttle or the first space shuttle to officially be released to the public was actually called Space Shuttle Enterprise. Coincidence with Star Trek? It was actually a petition of about 100,000 people that made them change the name from the original name, which was the Space Shuttle Constitution. They had the Constitution so picked in advance, they had it so planned out that the Space Shuttle would be announced on Constitution Day in 1976. But when this petition came up and came forward to NASA and to the President of the United States at the time, incumbent Gerald Ford, they decided to change it. So thanks to a whole bunch of Trekkies, the name changed from Constitution to the Enterprise. But Gerald Ford at the time noted that he had actually served on a, a Navy ship called the Enterprise as well, which might have tied in. He didn't actually specifically say it was because of the Trekkies, but let's be honest, it was because of the Trekkies. So the Apollo missions. So the original name for the Apollo missions was put forward by Abe Silverstein, NASA's Director of Space Flight Development at the time. Silverstein originally chose the name because, allegedly because of the uh, positive connotations from Apollo, the Greek god Apollo, and the power that came with it. The committee at the time originally stated that the plan would be to use the Greek god name, but also to tie into the Greek theme because of the previous missions were all called Mercury. So the name Apollo is pretty cool, but actually the coolest part is the code names that some of the astronauts gave the lunar and command modules after Apollo 9. Now, if you know anything about the history of the first man in space, we know that their uh, command module was actually called Eagle, which is a pretty cool and powerful name. But there's some other interesting names that don't really line up with the mission. With names such as Gumdrop and Spider for Apollo 9, Charlie Brown and Snoopy for Apollo 10, Yankee Clipper for Apollo 12, and Casper for Apollo 16, it seems that Neil Armstrong and his crew decided on a pretty iconic name and not so much a goofy silly one. It all worked out in the end. The Mars Pathfinder mission. So launched in 1996, 
The Mars Pathfinder mission originally got its name for a year-long worldwide contest from kids 18 and under. The criteria was pretty simple. Uh, students needed to choose their favorite heroine from history and detail an, in an essay as to why they thought the name should be chosen for this mission and how their accomplishments would transfer to the Martian surface. So the agency received over 3,500 applications but decided on the name Sojourner Truth as the final winner. The name was originally selected by a 12-year-old from Connecticut who thought the name Sojourner Truth was, was appropriate because of the way she traveled across the land, advocating for abolition and women's rights. Other popular names for the contest was, of course, Amelia Earhart, Sacagawea, and Harriet Tubman. So this isn't the first time or the last time, certainly, that NASA has chosen to use a contest or an essay to select the name of their mission. NASA says it's not only a good way of crowdsourcing uh, a cool name for their missions, it's also a really good way to get the youth energized and excited about space missions. Mars Rover's Spirit and Opportunity. If inspiring children is the name of the game, then look no further than Spirit and Opportunity. In a contest hosted by the Planetary Society and LEGO, NASA received over 10,000 entries into this contest. The winner ended up being nine-year-old Sophie Collis from Arizona, a Russian-American who was adopted at the age of two from an orphanage in Siberia. And Sophie wrote in her essay, I used to live in an orphanage. It was dark and cold and lonely. At night, I looked up at the sparkly sky and felt better. I dreamed I could fly there. In America, I can make all my dreams come true. Thank you for the spirit and the opportunity. Ranger. So the Lunar Probe Ranger started in 1961 as an effort by NASA to acquire and transmit data from the, the lunar surface. The name was originally selected by JPL program director Clifford Cummings. Clifford was out on a camping trip with some friends, turned and noticed the, the back of his truck read Ranger, and just felt this awe-inspiring inspiration from the word Ranger and how it produces expedition and exploration, and that's what he decided on for the mission. Space Shuttle's Discovery, Columbia, and Atlantis. Now, some of you might not know that the Space Shuttle Endeavor was actually another contest entry, but Discovery, Columbia, and Atlantis, my, my one here, were actually chosen specifically by NASA and the committee. Now, NASA might not agree, but we do see them using a lot of themes that are very similar in their naming conventions. Greek gods, or ships in this case. Of course, it does make sense, like the, the uh, exploration of yore, of past times, we had ships traveling the globe to discover new and exciting places. That's exactly what our spacecraft are doing. They're traveling the universe or our solar system, looking for new and exciting things or information to learn. It does make sense. So Space Shuttle Discovery was named after two ships by the same name. There was one ship commandeered by Henry Hudson in 1610, while he searched for a Northwest Passage between the Atlantic and Pacific. And then there was the vessel Discovery, used by Captain Cook to explore the Hawaiian Islands. Now, Columbia being the first shuttle in space, you would think it would be a super important name or su super important person, such as a famous uh, Spanish explorer, but it actually isn't. It was actually named after Columbia Redaviva, who circumnavigated the globe in 1790. Atlantis, on the other hand, was named after a research vessel, which was used to uh, conduct research. Atlantis was actually named after a research vessel, which was used to conduct research between 1930 and 1966. It was actually the first American-built ship that was used for oceanographic research. It was subsequently purchased by Argentina, and by the end of its life, it had traveled more than 1.3 million miles. A little less than Space Shuttle Atlantis' 120 million miles total. So all these names are so amazing, and the stories behind them are really interesting. There's actually a ton of really interesting stories that go along with it. In the link down below in the description, you'll see a whole story, a whole book actually, written about all the names of all the different NASA uh, missions and projects and objects uh, as well. So thank you guys so much for coming along with me and learning about this. I really do love being able to learn about this and share it with you guys. I hope you guys appreciate that. If you do, let me know down below if you want to see more, if you want to learn more uh, about the names of some of the NASA projects. Maybe the Russian, maybe some other space agencies naming conventions. It'd be really cool to learn about that. So if you guys really did enjoy this, please click the like button. Subscribe if you think uh, I've deserved it. So thank you so much for watching, guys. And we'll see you next time on Space Course.